right, thanks so much for sharing your space with us. Now we're going to be talking with master naturalist Mark Upperman, and uh, thanks for being on the program. Thank you, Tom. We're going to be talking with a lot about what a master naturalist is, but I'm, I'm in my head I'm seeing somebody who goes out there identifying all sorts of weird creatures and visitors. <laughs> What's the strangest uh, creature you've seen here in the past week? Well, in the past week I've just noticed this uptick in, you know, my yard. I don't have any water features, but I've seen a lot of... Uh, frogs come in that I wouldn't have expected, you know, in a fairly dry or normally dry yard. Yeah. And, you know, I went back and looked up what that is, and it's a southern leopard frog, which normally needs a lot of water to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, but here it's coming into my yard to look for, I don't know, maybe drier space or something like that. <laughs> yeah, looking for an island in yeah. our monsoon, right? An uptick in all the insects that it wants to eat, things like that. Yeah, so, well, yeah. you know, you, uh, nature is quick to respond yes. to uh, both terrible drought or monsoon, as I've indicated. Let's talk a little bit more about what a, a master naturalist is. In my head, I'm assuming it's kind of like a master gardener. It's a very similar concept to the Master Gardener program, and Master Gardener, or Master Naturalists go through roughly the same type of training. We go through rigorous, in other words. It's it's ten weeks of Saturdays, you know, yeah. typically in the spring, mm -hmm. and each of those days is eight hours, typically, you mm -hmm. know, at different locations around Central Texas, and we focus on every aspect of Central Texas ecology and even the history of ecology and how to interpret what we see and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a commitment. And then, of right. course, after that, much like the Master Gardeners, we commit to 40 hours of volunteer time and another additional eight hours of advanced training per year to certify. Okay, cool. Well, we'll talk about those different component pieces, but I want to talk more about the experience for the people who are in the program. Mm. So. On those Saturdays, I'm, in, I'm seeing in my head again this kind of combination between uh, familiarizing yourself with the ecosystems and then the individual creatures that inhabit those systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, each of those sessions is typically led by an expert in a field, you know, so our mammalogy class, for instance, was led by a UT professor. And she comes in and she brings skulls and she brings, you know, skeletons and things like that for us to kind of scrutinize. And then we, we actually take a hike around the site and look at mammal tracks. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's a very hands-on experience. It's right. not just simple classroom, mm -hmm. you know, sit down, watch PowerPoint all the time. Right, so right. Well, really, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, and, and I... I I'm curious about the kinds of folks who come. What are the, you know, what what is what's the common element for the people who mm. are in, in, interested in this well, hobby? We, we like to say that it's a, you know, master naturalists have this love of giving back to their community and getting muddy at the same time. You know, <laughs> okay. so it's, you know, but you know, luckily here in in the Austin area, we're mm. very blessed to have a wide array of people that come yeah. and join the program. Everybody from students to retirees and mm. everything in between. Yeah, well, we also have a wide array of habitats. We're yes, at that intersection absolutely. point. So this would be, I would think. You have this opportunity to not just familiarize yourself with the common, but occasionally see something really extraordinary, a, a, a migrant or a vagrant uh, you know, bird species, for example, that just happens to be passing through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see, um, you, you know, a lot of the, the naturalists involve themselves in different types of bird counts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they will add to their life lists if you're a birder, you know, just to kind of figure out what they've seen, you know, over mm -hmm. time. And then we have plant surveys that we do. Mm -hmm. We have people that are involved in amphibian watches where they do, out, do counts based on the sound. Of, of the, you know, the sure. frogs well, or toads. Well, that's important in ornithology too, right? Yeah. It's like I mean, knowing the bird listen calls. Listen for a call, exactly. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, it, 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 to me, it sounds fascinating. And you talk about the volunteer activities. What does that entail? Volunteer activities for a master naturalist typically, you know, run the gamut of, I mean, we, we do everything. You know, here in, in Austin, again, we have so many nonprofits that are working, you know, in environmental ecology and stewardship mm -hmm. um, that we can donate our time to everything from the Wildflower Center to the Texas Amphibian Watch um, to Travis Audubon Society. Um, I personally do a lot of work with the City of Austin's Wildland Conservation Division on their preserves for water quality. Great. So, I mm -hmm. mean, it runs the gamut. And, right. you know, other chapters <clears throat> typically, you know, they may focus on one state park or, you know, one city park or mm -hmm. something like that or one project. We do a lot of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. 
non-native plant removal things. We do like invasives that. removal, yeah. um, you know, or even just tracking, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, because got to know where the stuff is before you can remove it. Right. So. Right. Well, it's, it, I mean, it sounds like an amazing opportunity. You know, one of the things I'm thinking about is the gift to the individuals of participating in these kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've, I've observed about um, birders, for example, is they seem to know how to pay attention. Mm -hmm. They're not going through the woods at a million miles an hour. They're attentive to the sounds and to the sights around them. And in our time, when everything seems to be moving at 60 miles an hour, mm -hmm. that's a real gift. It is. And I think before I went through the training, you know, a lot of these things that I'd see were just in one, one eye and out the other eye. And, yeah. you know, nowadays, well, exactly. Whatever, bird. Yeah. <laughs> now Check. I'm, I'm like, what was that, you know? Can I get a picture of it? Can mm -hmm. I look at it later? Can I identify it? How does mm -hmm. it interact with things? And, mm -hmm. you know, while my mind may be racing about what I'm seeing, you know, I've kind of taught myself to slow down and pay attention to the details of whatever mm -hmm. I'm seeing too, to see how right. that fits into identification or, you know, where it's going. <clears throat> well, that's kind of where the rubber hits the road in life, isn't it? It's, <laughs> a, it's in the details. Yes. And well, uh, it sounds like an, a great, great experience. Now, um, you, you talked about the volunteer-based experience, but uh, the learning and upkeep, really, of, uh, you say the certification process doesn't quite end after you get through. Not your first year, no. no. So this is, this is uh, I use the word rigorous, but it, it really is scientifically based, serious study. It's expert-led. Each of the classes mm -hmm. in that first year, you know, gives you, as much as it sounds like it's very long and, and in-depth, um, mm -hmm. It is incredibly, you know, it's expert-led, and it's really just an intro to what, what's going on in the region. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, we're, we find something that we like, and we okay. keep pursuing that over time, basically. Well, yeah. you say find something you like. Well, let's talk about your own experiences as a master naturalist. Let's talk, you know, have you had some peak experiences out there in Central Texas where you've encountered something that really instilled wonder and awe in you. Yeah, I think, you know, I mentioned that I, I have worked with the water quality protection lands, and mm -hmm. I've had some opportunity to, opportunities to go on pieces of land that were, that are set aside, they're not open to the public. Right. I lead public hikes on them, and I take people to places that are just awe-inspiring in terms of their beauty. Maybe it's a spring or something coming out of one of the, the properties, the sides right. of something. Um, or just fields of wildflowers, you know. Mm -hmm. Just last week I led a small tour just in between the rains mm -hmm. that uh, <laughs> we got to see so many dragonfly species mm -hmm. and just fields and fields of, you know, Indian blanket flowers and all kinds of stuff, Coreopsis, yeah. it was gorgeous. Well, uh, as, as we've talked about, uh, Central Texas has a kind of a, a rich array of things to experience. Whether you're interested in birds or um, or, or flowers, mm -hmm. even the insects, and this yeah. in this summer, I think the naturalists are going to be a little busy with the insects. Definitely so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of um, you know a lot of a lot of chances to just kind of figure out what you like and run with it. And I know you know we've got many of the master naturalists that spec uh, that that kind of. Uh, specialize in one insect. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's dragonflies, for instance. Well, I mean, that's a very that, common a, one. And it's a fun one to yes. really get involved. The, the diversity is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You're, yeah. you're sporting the, your dragonfly. Fit, the pin. symbol of our of our uh, the, the statewide master naturalist program. So, right. Yeah. Well, and and again, you know, when you it's when you go down deep into these different species, again, that 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 the amazing diversity. Of uh, just, you know the difference between one species and the next, absolutely amazing. Real briefly, let's just talk about the steps of how people get involved and get mm -hmm. registered in, as as master naturalists. We open our application process roughly the beginning of August, and mm -hmm. we take applications online. And we have a small committee of dedicated volunteers that screen a lot of those. We actually mm -hmm. read through them. We figure out, is this person a really good fit for a volunteer service organization? Sure. Are they going to want to put in the time, you know, the commitment to learn things, but also the continuing education and the year-after-year -year commitment to, right. you know, certifying and putting those 
hours out there. Yeah, it's so, not a light commitment. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark, I hope that a lot of people will take advantage of the opportunity and uh, uh, become nest or naturalists. I'm sure there's a lot of interest out there in, in our audience. Thank you for the work that you're doing, and uh, thanks for being our guest. Thank you, Tom. All right. All right. And uh, coming up next is our friend Daphne.